The amazing Karen Calabrese, 73 years young, a teenager who has the secret to the fountain of youth. Take it away, my dear. Well, this is what we're making today, right? Your raw food, and we're doing raw raviolis. Can you believe it? But we're not going to just make the raviolis. I got a surprise. We're going to do even more. Let's go to the kitchen. So, to make raviolis, I know you're thinking dough. Nobody's eating dough these days, right? Guess what we're going to use? We are going to use turnips, right? We're going to use a big fat old turnip to make our raviolis. So I'm just going to kind of go through everything quickly to show how we're going to do it. Because uh, it does take a little bit of time, not too much. But you're going to take your ravioli and you're just going to peel it. A regular potato peeler. You're just going to peel your turnip. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a pen. We peeled it because it might take us a couple of minutes. So this is our peeled turnip. And we want to make this ahead of time because it's going to have to sit for a minute. Now, I'm using a mandolin. You may not have a mandolin in your kitchen, but you could actually use the potato peeler, I think, kind of to make them kind of narrow. But pop or mandolin. You can get them as cheap as 14 bucks, right? And you'll use it a lot. So we're just going to make some very thin slices. That's why we're using it. Let's show you how it goes. And all we do is, there you go. How simple is that? Look. And what's happening is these nice little discs are coming out. And so after we get our disc done, this is so simple. And people say to me, what are raw foods? Well, everybody's eating raw foods. We're just going to make our raw foods feel a little more familiar. Okay? All right. So we've got our little disc that we did. Next, we're going to take the little disc. And we're going to use Himalayan salt, and we're going to massage the disc, okay? So we're going to put a little salt in there and kind of massage it in, all of our little disc. I know it seems like it's going to be too salty, but it won't. And we're going to let those sit for a bit, okay? Gorgeous. So we're just going to put salt. And what the salt is doing, it's actually cooking them, because I salted these yesterday. And look how small, how limber they are, right? They're ready to see them because we'll eat them later. And really, you don't have to be that particular. You can just throw them in, salt them, turn them over a few times, and you're ready. What did I do with my towel? It's right here. <laughs> too much of these towels interrupt the plant, right, with too much paper. Even though we have spinach ready and the cheese. These are spinach cheese stuffed raviolis that we're making today. So Wow. I have some that, once again, I made ahead of time. I like to use these reusable bags, but your regular Ziploc bags will work perfectly. Where's my spinach? Okay. We want to get our spinach, and it's nice and clean already. Do I need to talk louder? <laughs> oh, speak up like you're on stage, but you look okay. amazing. How's you that? know, I'm 73 your years face. young. Yes. You're so beautiful. Everybody can hear you. All right, I'm going to speak louder. So, right? Because it breaks down the enzyme inhibitors. It makes You say cheese, you're talking about plant-based cheese made out of nuts. Oh yes, you know, it's been so long since I ate the regular thing, I forget to say plant-based. I mean, cheese, means, cheese means nuts to me, I'm sorry, yes. Plant-based cheese. So, and that's really a big part of being a vegan, why a lot of people stay vegetarian because they're not comfortable giving up their cheese, right? And so cheese is a major component. So I'm just gonna take my cheese I'm going to use, did I use the S-blade or the, I think I, I'm going to use the, the uh, Vitamix for this because it will make it smoother. So I soaked my nuts. You don't have to soak them overnight. You can do it for a couple of hours and they'll be ready. But I have my notes up. And you start out here, by the time they soak, it doubles up so you have twice the amount. So I'm going to put this in my Vitamix. Oh, you know what we forgot, Nancy? We forgot the, um, the, uh, drop, the, the yeast, but that's okay. We can make it without. I don't even think it's on the recipe that way, right? Let me check my, I wrote these recipes some time ago. So for my cheese, cashews, the nuts, olive oil. Oh, we gotta put some olive oil in there. You will have all the specific ingredients. Uh, Jane has the recipe for you, she'll put up. I just kind of wing it with everything. I put some olive oil in there with it. And let's see, oh, garlic. Put a little garlic in there. I like garlic and everything. And what an incredible kitchen you have. It looks so rich with nutrients. Thank you. Yes. Well, you know, that's a huge part 
of changing your lifestyle. You have to set yourself up for it. You know what I mean? And making things practical and convenient to do will help you keep it in practice. Now, Karen, I have to tell you here on uh, Lunch Break Live, we have a tradition. When you hit that blender, you got to do a blender dance and I'll dance with you. There you go. Do, what, can I put my own music on or what? No, I'll dance with you. No, <laughs> we'll, just, we'll, do a, we'll do a regular dance. So it's very exciting because what we like to show is that a, a vegan kitchen is a heck of a lot of fun. And since every vegan kitchen involves a blender, for the most part, we we just dance during the blender. We I don't even need it. music. And the other great thing about a vegan, a raw kitchen, vegan kitchen is there are no mistakes. I'm giving you very specifics, but you don't have to be very exacting. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. you can change some of the ingredients if you want. Okay, I'm ready to dance. All right, three. Let's go. So what's in there? No, but I forgot to add the lemon juice. We gotta have lemon, lemon juice. juice. Whoa, lemon juice. So give us a recap. What's in there? We've got soaked nuts, cashew and macadamia. We've got about a quarter cup of water. We've got salt. We've got a little bit of garlic. And we've got lemon juice and a little bit of olive oil because I put a little oil and everything. You know, when you go vegan, sometimes you miss the fats and this one keeps going. Okay. I like it. Now, there's my cheese. I'll let you see what it looks like. And here's the deal. Once you leave it in the refrigerator overnight, it will get hard like a cheese. This one, will, <laughs> this one walks. On the okay. Can you open that and so we can see inside? That looks amazing. Absolutely. I'm showing you the one. Where's my bag? Give me one second. I just wasted a little lemon juice there. So here's my cheese. See? And once it goes in the refrigerator, it will harden up a little bit. But you could use it just like this also. We will it, use this also. It looks like a ricotta almost. And we can flavor it with just about anything. You can flavor it with chives. You could flavor it with tomatoes, sun-dried tomatoes. It's really wonderful. It lasts in the refrigerator a good two weeks sometimes. And you can use it for just about anything. I love like it. Things. We sell oh. it at the Karen's store too, but it's so easy to make. All right, we've got our cheese. So next, I need a bit of a mess here. Next, we're going to make our marinara sauce. And that is so simple and easy. I'm going to use sun-dried tomatoes that I've soaked overnight. Okay, we're going to have sun-dried tomatoes in there with the water that I soaked it with. I'm going to throw in some garlic. I like lots of garlic. Do you see how easy this is? Wait till, wait till we put it all together. You're going to be amazed at the meal you have. I'm going to add a little olive oil to it. Okay. And what am I missing? I'm just going to check my recipe real quick. Uh, what calls for none will show you, but we can use sea salt instead and olives. Let's put some olives in there. Whoa. Make sure they're pitted before you throw them in. <laughs> I was munching on them before we came on, Jane. I love olives. Okay, so we have olives. Am I forgetting anything? We'll put the other tomatoes in last. Okay, so now I'm gonna blend this with the S blade. I guess we have to dance again. Oh, Nancy, can we put it on backwards? Okay. All right. Okay. Now, just no, talk no, us through what we're doing. Actually, a little secret here. This is not my kitchen, my home kitchen. This is my studio kitchen, so you think I really know how to do this. But I made it last night. Nancy, why isn't this working? It's the right top for it. Anyway, I would blend the zit, 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 okay? We're not going to take up all of our time. For some reason, I don't know why it's not catching. Well, you know, it's hard. I always find those, you just got to snap it in. And then when you snap it in, right, angle, it's like, right? 
Yeah, you got to get that right angle, and that that is a bit challenging. But we get it. We get it. Okay, this bit dance, 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 and it's <laughs> made some. Already. Oh, so can we see? Can we see? Look at that. That is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Our sauce. Okay. Wow. And tell us what's in it again. We've got sun-dried tomatoes. Then I added fresh Roma tomatoes, but I put them in last because I wanted them kind of chunky. So I yeah. used the sun-dried tomato to make the nice base for it. And then I added the sun, uh, the Roma tomatoes that are kind of sweet. So it was kind of chunky. All right. So that's our marinara sauce. It's all made. And here's the beauty. I'm going to cheat just a tiny bit because, you know, we're going to make the raviolis. But now in your regular supermarkets, you can buy this pasta already cut for you already done every supermarket from the health food stores to even our local supermarkets have this zucchini that's already cut so you can have that if you don't have the time to make the raviolis so let's put together a ravioli real quick okay so we're going to take our turnip. what is that this is the turnip that we did in the very beginning oh my gosh look at that that's the turnip this is a turnip that we did with the mandolin and then after salting it, you see they get soft. They're kind of like cooked. This is one that we just did. See, it's soft already. So we take the turnip. Now, you want to tell your kids to eat their vegetables. This is a great way to get turnips in, folks, right? So we're going to take the turnip. We're going to take a little bit of our cheese. And people want to know, what's the final name of this dish? Raviolis. Spinach cheese ravioli. <laughs> Spinach. <laughs> Spinach cheese wrap, spinach stuffed raviolis. That's what it is, spinach stuffed raviolis. All right, and I'm gonna put a little of the spinach in there that's been marinating so it's nice and soft. You see, it's like it's cooked now too, it's soft. I'm gonna put a little bit of spinach in there. Oh. And then and we'll just kind of fold it over, see how that? Okay. Yeah. Doesn't that look like a raviolis, Chef Boy? Yeah. Whatever? Yeah. Heck yeah. How simple is that? So we just made a little ravioli there. I'll do a couple more. See? When you and this is zero cholesterol, filled with nutrients, superfoods. This is how you stay fabulous at 73 years young. Yes, ma'am. This is all I eat. Well, I eat more than the raviolis. But yes, you can take anything in the world that you're comfortable with and used to and turn it into this one, I promise you. I do have a cookbook with a lot of other ideas. And like I said, these are just ideas and guidelines. You can do just about anything that you want with it. That's got to be my favorite title for a book, Soak Your Nuts. <laughs> well, I figured when I named it, Jane, that nobody would forget it. And guys wouldn't mind carrying it around, right? <laughs> now, uh, Miriam wants to know, I need to get a mandolin because I cannot cut anything thin. What's the best mandolin? Oh, wow. I don't even know. I've had this one for so many years. They're everywhere, though. I don't think it really matters. You can get a cheap one. You can get an expensive because it's just a little slicer. They yeah. Don't work. So yeah. I, anyone I works. Or discount stores have them. Mm -hmm. I don't think it has to. Now, I would invest in a good blender. You know. I'll, I'll yes. A blender, the good one is important. But something like a mandolin, I don't think it, it really matters. Okay. So I just made a bunch of raviolis for us, like we saw in the beginning. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And we can just add more of our marinara sauce to that. Ooh, look at that. It. I wish you were here. Can I ship you something? Oh my gosh. I'm, I am just salivating. This is so fantastic. And, you know, during uh, this challenging time, I'm eating healthier and I've actually lost like 19 pounds now. See, because you're being smart about it. You're using it as a time to, which I think everybody could, a time to do some healing, right? You're stuck doing things you're not used to. So do something you really don't do. So here's another plate of our raviolis. How easy was that? Oh, so gorgeous. So gorgeous. But I also took the pasta that you can buy commercially and I made a pasta. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Let me see. Can I see that up close? That is extraordinary. Look at that. And you got your cheese. Let's see. Do I have a little knife here? You can actually have cheese and crackers. Um, and what are the crackers, the raw crackers? Uh, we are make these with sprouted uh, wheat berries or quinoa. Oh, wait, I just thought of something else. So you got a lettuce. You can take lettuce. You can take some of the cheese and put inside of there, right? You can put some of the spinach inside of there with the cheese. Mm. And uh, let's cut up an olive and put in there. And we can make a little sandwich wrap for the next day. 
And would you refrigerate just to keep it nice? It stays pretty nice in the fridge? Absolutely. I refrigerate it at night. Although I did learn from my teacher who started the raw movement that if you kind of leave your food out overnight, it becomes enzymatically alive. Okay, so we just made a little sandwich too with the cheese, Gorgeous. With the spinach, and we have a little That is, so that is all delightful. All of this was made. And how long did it take me, really? I mean, you could get all of this done in a good 15 minutes. Yeah. Do you need me to recap or... Yeah, well, yeah, just give us a recap and, and maybe you could hold up the final product because it's so beautiful. Thank you. Okay, I'll get my helper to help me. Okay, so we start by, with the mandolin, cutting the turnip. So we start with a turnip that we are going to peel, right? Very easy to do. Then we're going to add it to the mandolin and we're going to slice it very thin. And we're going to salt it so that Salting is kind of the way raw people cook everything, salt or olive oil. And, and you're, not, you're not worried about too much salt. You don't worry about too much salt. Well, I'm using Himalayan sea salt. Got it. Actually, we're supposed to have salt, fat, and sugar, just the right salt, fat, and sugar. In the olden days, they used to put salt licks out for the animals to be healthy. There's a lot of minerals if it's the right salt. We don't want to use white salt. So I'm using a Himalayan pink salt. So that sits like that for a minute. You could do it overnight if you needed to in the salt and then we take our spinach i have a bag of spinach here and i'm going to take my spinach and cut it up and i put it in a ziploc plastic bag and add a little olive oil and salt to that and we've got that setting aside ready waiting for us i kind of clipped a little um cut up a little basil too i like basil Ooh, basil gorgeous and i added the basil on top then to make our um marinara sauce you get a machine that you know how to work <laughs> and you dance while you're doing it. So we put in our sun-dried tomatoes that we've soaked for a few hours. You don't want to buy the sun-dried tomatoes that come in olive oil. I'd get the plain sun-dried tomatoes. Do I have any around here to show you? Um, then I would put them in with the olives and the garlic and the salt or namashoni, you, whichever you want to use for seasoning. Blend that up. Then I would add my Roma tomatoes to that. So it's a little chunky. We don't want to uh, too liquidy. I blend that up. And I did do a little bit of a cheat here. I forgot to tell you because the tomatoes, it's not really season, uh, tomato season in Chicago. So they were a little pale looking. So I kind of cheated and I added a little bit of beet juice to it just to make it red. Beet juice. Oh, wow. That's incredible. So I added a tiny bit of beet juice so it would be a richer red. You know, eating the food, your digestion starts when you see the food. Your digestive system starts to work when you visually see the food. So you want to make it as close to what you're used to or comfortable with so you digested well. Although you don't generally have problems with raw food. T Tamara Edwards said, I just bought your book. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and the, uh, the beauty of my book, because everybody isn't ready to be a raw foodist. I didn't start out raw. I started out uh, vegetarian, then vegan, and then raw. So I have a bunch of cooked vegan recipes in here also. So one side it's cooked vegan, the other side it's raw. So you get a lot for your money with this. Wow. I also have a YouTube channel with a lot of my recipes up for free. Just stuff I make up every day as I go along. I dream food. <clears throat> anyway, so we've got our, uh, then we put the whole thing together with the, um, turnip, the spinach, we fold it over, and this is the outcome, one of the outcomes. So gorgeous, so gorgeous. If, if, if you could just outcome. zoom in on that a little bit, it's just, it's like a work of art. It's almost too pretty to eat, operative word, almost. Thank you. <laughs> well, here's the, well, and we put it in a little Italian. Oh, and you know what else I made? It's, we'll do it another day, but I actually made raw bread. I made some what? more. What? Do you want to show them over there in my dehydrator? Oh my gosh, that looks gorgeous. You are, what's that? Oh, that's it again. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I see it from another angle. From another angle, it looks very, very interesting. So tell us just a little bit about where you are. You're in Chicago and your restaurants. Yes, I'm in Chicago, Illinois, in Bucktown. I, I had three restaurants. We're building a new all-raw restaurant now in Bucktown. We have a parking lot that's important in the city. 
But we're going to concentrate on a meal program where you buy a box of food for the week. We will have some items you can come in and buy singularly. But I did this a long time ago, and I think it's a good time to do, do it again, where you order a box of food. It will be all gourmet, all exciting. I have, I have so much stuff to share with you. So you can order a box of food for the week, and you'll get juice, smoothie, entrees, salads, dessert, everything in the box of food. And we're working on that right now. So by January 1st, it should be going, and you're going to be one of the first people I send a box of food to, Jane. Oh, you know what? I am just honored to have you on our show. You are an inspiration. You are truly an inspiration. When I look at you and I say, this woman cannot be 73, and yet you are. And the, your youthfulness pervades your whole personality. Uh, you're just extraordinary. And uh, so- well, not, Jane, it's all for all of us. We just have to learn how to eat right, right? Because you've seen the differences yourself. It's what you put in here, making that connection. What goes in is how you're gonna think, how you're gonna look, how you're gonna feel. And we get to make the choice every day. I say make it as easy and simple as possible so that you wanna continue it every day. But thank you so much. This is this is such an honor that you've allowed me to come on your show. And you could go to Shop Karen's on my website and get more information on all the stuff we're doing. Tell, tell me that again so we can Shop hear. Shop Karen's we at Karen. Uh, Shop Karen is my website. Okay. And also, I'm on Instagram. I'm always doing food and meals on Instagram also. So you can go to Karen Calabrese on Instagram. I have a YouTube channel with stuff up for years that I've been making. Uh, because I think food and that's all for free. So any way that I can help you in your journey and I want as many people on my journey with me as possible. I just love this whole process. And I love people like you with the influence you have to really be out there and getting the word out. You know, this is the way to go for the world as far as I'm concerned. The better we eat, the better we're going to feel. So we'll happier next to our next door neighbors, right? <laughs> we treat everybody right. Absolutely. So and I just love the fact that you show it's fun. It's fun. There's so much versatility and variety in plants, in nuts, in fruits, in vegetables. I Absolutely. mean, when people think raw vegan, they, they, all they think about is I'm eating um, spinach and carrots, you know, which we do that too. But you can make anything that you're used to in your world in my raw world. I truly believe that. I've done it. All right. Well, it was fast. It was fabulous. You are fabulous. Karen Calabrese, you are amazing. We love you. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, Jane. Yeah. I love you too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.